Welcome back to our special Crypto in 2022. Joining us now is one of the best people to talk about taxes and crypto, Chandan Lota. He's a former project manager at Google, working on search and Android, now the co-founder of Cointracker. Chandan, great to see you. Thanks so much for having me. So first, I want to talk about changes. So what are some of the biggest changes for tax filers this year who traded crypto? The big thing that we're seeing this year is a big explosion in complexity of different types of crypto use cases that people are using. So we've seen a massive rise in DeFi and NFTs, and of course, users using more and more cryptocurrency exchanges and wallets. And with the added complexity there, it becomes more and more difficult to comply with those crypto taxes. That's where software like uh, the software we work on at Coin Tracker, can help users sort of seamlessly and accurately get those calculations done. And we certainly know the IRS won't be pulling any punches. They want to make sure people are filing correctly. Are there any tax breaks or savings regarding crypto this year? There absolutely are. The savvy investor can definitely take advantage of the tax code. So, for example, there is an opportunity to do cryptocurrency tax loss harvesting, essentially selling positions that are at an unrealized loss and then buying them back in order to realize those losses. And again, using tax software can help you identify those opportunities, especially when we're in a down market like we are for many users today. Exactly. I mean, we're seeing a lot of a lot of uh, cryptos was sort of down year to date, sort of really fluctuating with a lot of this macro news out of Ukraine and Russia. But for those people who just started trading crypto last year or perhaps didn't file, what can they expect from the IRS if they're not compliant and caught up this year, perhaps in terms of things like grace periods or penalties? Well, unfortunately, the IRS doesn't have uh, grace periods for, for cryptocurrency taxes because the rules have been out now for, for several years. The important thing that new people can do when they're getting into cryptocurrency is keep really good records of all of their transactions. And um, again, using tax software can help do that. Um, the key thing to do is to do your best and try to be honest when reporting these capital gains and losses. And, and again, if you're at a loss, there's actually an opportunity to claim those losses and claim deductions. So it works to many users' advantages to, to actually go ahead and file those taxes. Now, I want to talk about some of the subsections that you mentioned. You mentioned NFT sales, which obviously gained a lot of momentum over the past year and a half. But then you also have people who've been earning money from mining crypto. What do they need to be aware of? Right. So for people who are mining crypto, you potentially have crypto income there. When you receive the fair market value of, let's say, mining Bitcoin, that's income. And that would be reported just like other types of income that you might have on your tax return as well. So again, it's important to keep good records of what are the addresses you used, which transactions occurred, which awards you, you earned from your mining. And um, keeping track of all of that in, in tax software can help make it a very seamless filing experience instead of you know pulling your hair out when it comes to tax filing time. So then what are some of the biggest questions that you're hearing from your users at varying investment levels? Right. It, I mean, crypto taxes can be very complicated. Crypto itself is already, uh, you know, a, a bit of a complexity there and add in the tax code, add in different coins, wallets, exchanges, transferring assets between different places. It can be really confusing to figure out how to accurately identify cost basis, how to claim losses, how to even keep track of all these gains and losses. So the biggest question we get from folks is how to even stay on top of crypto taxes to begin with. And my number one recommendation to everyone is to keep good records. Use exchanges and wallets that allow you to easily export your transaction history. Use good tax software to stay on top of your transactions year round. Don't wait until April 15th or tax day, April 18th, I believe it is this year, to start working on your taxes. Get all your records uploaded now, today, and so that by the time tax day rolls around, everything is sort of seamlessly up to, uploaded and ready to go. And your accountant will thank you later as well. You certainly don't want to wait until, wait until the panic sets in. Now, I want to shift gears and talk about some of these crypto-friendly hubs. You have states like Colorado hoping to accept tax payments in crypto by the end of this summer. So what are the complications that come with that? And what's the likelihood that the IRS will accept crypto as payment? It's great to see that various local jurisdictions becoming more crypto friendly, um, like the ones that you mentioned. Um, I, I'm not sure I would hold my breath for the IRS accepting crypto payments uh, for taxes anytime soon, but uh, we, you know we, we can hope and we'll, we'll keep our eyes out for that. The key thing to remember there is when you dispose of crypto, even for paying taxes, 
that is a disposition event. And in the eyes of the IRS, that would be a capital gain or a capital loss that is incurred there. So even if you're paying your taxes, it's still a disposition of property. And that's still an event that you would have to keep track of and realize a gain or loss on that transaction. And as you mentioned, even explaining cryptocurrency is, is difficult enough, let alone then your tax filings. But what about the filing process for those who manage holdings in overseas crypto exchanges? How is that process different? If you're holding crypto outside of the U.S., you're still going to be subject to U.S. tax filing rules. So you're still going to have the same capital gains and capital losses that you would if you were holding your crypto on a U.S.-based exchange. The difference is that there might be some additional IRS filing requirements or other government filing requirements for assets held in foreign accounts. So, for example, uh, cryptocurrency holders who have substantial holdings, often in sort of the 50,000 plus range, might be subject to FATCA filing requirements, which are basically disclosures to the government, but not additional taxes. Now, just quickly, I want to, to highlight this. You're now tracking 3% of the entire global crypto market cap on Cointracker. What sort of insights is that giving you about where perhaps investment is headed and perhaps the industry? That's right. Yeah, over $50 billion of crypto assets are now synced to Cointracker on a daily basis. And the beauty of that is it helps us and our product team have a more informed view of where cryptocurrency users are coming online, what types of use cases are becoming more and more popular. Um, and some of the things that we've really noticed take off in a big way in 2021 and now heading into 2022 are in the realms of decentralized finance, DeFi and, and NFTs. And those are both areas that we're planning on investing a lot more effort in to make the, the tax tracking, the portfolio tracking and the user experience a lot, lot better. Well, thank you so much. There you go, people. A lot, no excuses now. It's uh, starting early when it comes to filing your taxes if you're trading crypto. Thank you so much. Chandan Lota there, co-founder of Cointracker. Thank you for your time.